Welcome to HB Tuner's Ford Gen 1 Coyote Training Part 22. In this training module, we're going to be taking a look at doing a demonstration and tuning of our VCT programming. So we're going to look at how we can get better economy, how we can get better on-off throttle drivability mapping out our variable cam, as well as our optimal power or full throttle operation. We're going to have a lot to cover. Let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at working with our variable cam tuning in our Gen 1 Coyote applications. The last tutorial, we looked at the overview of the variable cam scheduling and mapping and all the map points and understanding how that tied together. This tutorial, we're actually gonna put the pieces of the puzzle together and start to go in and dial in the variable cam. Now, this is a bolt-on Coyote, so it's just naturally aspirated basic bolt-ons. There's nothing wildly done in terms of modifications to this engine. So the variable cam mapping that we're gonna find here is it's going to be minimal what we need to change. We're really going to be dialing some things in the optimal power mode where we have more control over the rotation of the cam. We'll actually see a little bit difference in our power delivery, but we can use the variable cam mapping to dial in some fuel economy and also making sure that in our transitional type of driving, so coming off the throttle, back on the throttle, and entering optimal power, that the cams are starting to rotate and get into position of where they need to be at so that we have smooth and, and consistent power and torque delivery. So we're gonna talk about all that here in the tutorial. The first thing that I wanna do is just cover up where we're at in the calibration process so that you understand why I'm doing things in certain order of operations. So we've dialed the math in. We put the JLT intake on this, we've dialed it in, we talked about that in a separate tutorial. That's actually the same calibration file that I'm working with here right now. I've just labeled and saved it as our VCT tuning. I've just changed the file name so that I'm not overwriting anything we've done in that previous tutorial where we dialed in that JLT intake. Now, if we jump in here to engine and go to airflow and we take a look under math calibration, I'm purposely leaving this in math only mode and ignoring the speed density calculations because when we're making our changes in any kind of variable cam scheduling or mapping, that will throw off the speed density calibration. We haven't done anything with speed density yet. We will be looking at how to dial that in in a separate tutorial but we wanna make sure that the variable cam mapping is taken care of first before we tackle and look at speed density because again, it can throw that off. Also, really before we dig into the spark timing and, and tuning and dialing and spark timing, because as we change our variable cam mapping, that can also throw off the spark timing. So we need to go in and change the spark timing mapping uh, based on variable cam. So we wanna make sure that the variable cam is the very next thing that we are dialing in. And the nice thing about having it in math mode, if we're changing and dialing in the actual VCT scheduling, so the variable cam mapping, we can move the variable cam around pretty much anywhere we want and it won't throw off our fuel delivery because the mass airflow is measuring the amount of airflow coming into the engine. If we're talking about speed density, that's an inferred calculation that's going to be estimating the amount of airflow or air mass coming into the engine and that hinges upon us having calibration tables dialed in correctly. Now the mass airflow is technically a calibration table, but we verified that as the very first uh, start in the process of dialing in our Gen 1 Coyote. So we know that that's valid and that'll absorb these changes that we're making here. Then once we dial the variable cam in, we can move the speed density and make our updates and changes in those speed density tables to reflect what we've done here in the variable cam mapping. And then further downstream, we'll take a look at doing spark timing tuning and also taking a look at dialing in our torque tables based on any kind of changes that we're making again in the variable cam. So the variable cam can affect the torque production of the engine, which would then affect the torque calculations and the torque based tables. So they're all things to kind of think about. They're all downstream of a variable cam change. So this is the next thing that I change and update in the calibration process with a Gen 1 Coyote. All right, so now we understand that we are in map only mode. Let's turn our attention into the variable cam. So if we go here from airflow into variable camshaft, we're taking a look at all these different tables. There's a lot of things to, to deal with and to talk about. First things first, let's update a couple basic details. The uh, first thing I wanna go and update here is max phasing limit engine oil temperature. Under the advance here, I'm gonna change all of these values to negative 50, just so that that's not going to limit us in our variable cam movement, even at the lower engine speeds here. Also, at the intake cam retard, we're gonna change this to 40 degrees all throughout. Just getting those very basic changes out of the way so that doesn't hinder us in uh, mapping out our variable cam. So we've updated those two basic tables. Um, there are some uh, additional things we need to go and consider here. If we take a look at the map points configuration, the first thing is I want to just talk about this real quick. Map points configuration is going to be saying that we can call on map points 0 to 11 and map point OP, which is optimal power full throttle mode. 
We can see here it's calling on from 0 to 11 or 12 total tables of map points. Now, if we go underneath this on the snap to point, this is calling out what variable cam map points can actually be used. We see here 0 to 7, and then we also see here map point 10 and map point OP. These are the actual pairings that we can call on for movement of the camshaft. Now, why this is important is because we can actually have, if we look here in the map points, we can actually have the map points for something like spark timing reference other map point spark timing tables even though we're not technically calling on them with our map points because we can see here if we're taking a look again snap to point this is the actual allowable map points to be used in variable cam movement we can see here map points 8 9 and 11 have a value of 0 they're not called on in the VCT scheduling but the map points configuration here um, 8 9 and 11 are called on so meaning spark timing tables or speed density tables. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.